Necrophilia, Wikipedia article audio. Necrophilia, also known as necrophilism, necrolagnia, necrocoitus, necroclesis, and thanatophilia, is a sexual attraction or sexual act involving corpses. It is classified as a paraphilia by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association. Origins of Term History Classification Research Humans Other Animals Legality Brazil India New Zealand South Africa Sweden United Kingdom United States Footnotes Sources In Literature Rossman and Resnick reviewed information from 34 cases of necrophilia describing the individual's motivations for their behaviors, these individuals reported the desire to possess a non-resisting and non-rejecting partner, reunions with a romantic partner, sexual attraction to corpses, comfort or overcoming feelings of isolation, or seeking self-esteem by expressing power over a homicide victim. The term necrophilia is thought to have been coined by Belgian physician Joseph Guise Lane in his Lecons Orales sur les Frenopathies, in a lecture given around 1850, in reference to contemporary necrophile François Bertrand. It is within the category of the destructive madman that one needs to situate certain patients to whom I would like to give the name of necrophiliacs. The alienists have adopted, as a new form, the case of Sergeant Bertrand, the disinterer of cadavers on whom all the newspapers have recently reported. However, don't think that we are dealing here with a form of frenopathy which appears for the first time. The ancients, in speaking about lycanthropy, have cited examples to which one can more or less relate the case which has just attracted the public attention so strongly. The term was popularized about a decade later by psychiatrist Benedict Morel, who also discussed Bertrand. In the ancient world, sailors returning corpses to their home country were often accused of necrophilia. Singular accounts of necrophilia in history are sporadic, though written records suggest the practice was present within ancient Egypt. Herodotus writes in the histories that, to discourage intercourse with a corpse, ancient Egyptians left deceased beautiful women to decay for three or four days before giving them to the embalmers. Herodotus also alluded to suggestions that Greek tyrant Periander had defiled the corpse of his wife, employing a metaphor, Periander baked his bread in a cold oven. Acts of necrophilia are depicted on ceramics from the Moshe culture, which reigned in northern Peru from the 1st to 8th century CE. A common theme in these artifacts is the masturbation of a male skeleton by a living woman. Hittite law from the 16th century BC through to the 13th century BC explicitly permitted sex with the dead. In Renaissance Italy, following the reputed moral collapse brought about by the Black Death and before the Roman Inquisition of the Counter-Reformation, the literature was replete with sexual references, these include necrophilia. In the case of the epic poem Orlando in Amorato by Matteo Maria Boiardo, first published in 1483. In a notorious modern example, American serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was a necrophiliac. Dahmer wanted to create a sex slave that would mindlessly consent to whatever he wanted. When his attempts failed, and his male victim died, he would keep the corpse until it decomposed beyond recognition, continuously masturbating and performing sexual intercourse on the body. In order to be aroused, 
he had to murder his male victims before performing sexual intercourse with them. Dahmer stated that he only killed his victims because they wanted to leave after having sex, and would be angry with him for drugging them. British serial killer Dennis Nilsson is also considered to have been a necrophiliac. In the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, recurrent, intense sexual interest in corpses can be diagnosed under other specified paraphilic disorder when it causes marked distress or impairment in important areas of functioning. A 10-tier classification of necrophilia exists. Additionally, criminologist Lee Meller's typology of homicidal necrophiles consists of eight categories, and is based on the combination of two behavioral axes, destructive, preservative, and cold, warm. This renders four categories to which Meller adds an additional four. Dabblers have transitory opportunistic sexual relations with corpses, but this is not their preference. Category F homicidal necrophiles commit post-mortem sex acts only while in a catathymic state. Exclusive mutilophiles derive pleasure purely from mutilating the corpse, while sexual cannibals and vampires are sexually aroused by eating human body parts. Category A, C, and F offenders may also cannibalize or drink the blood of their victims. Necrophilia is often assumed to be rare, but no data for its prevalence in the general population exists. Some necrophiles only fantasize about the act, without carrying it out. In 1958, Clough and Brown commented that, although rarely described, Necrophiliac fantasies may occur more often than is generally supposed. Rossman and Resnick reviewed 122 cases of necrophilia. The sample was divided into genuine necrophiles, who had a persistent attraction to corpses, and pseudonecrophiles, who acted out of opportunity, sadism, or transient interest. Of the total, 92% were male and 8% were female. 57% of the genuine necrophiles had occupational access to corpses, with morgue attendant, hospital orderly and cemetery employee being the most common jobs. The researchers theorized that either of the following situations could be antecedents to necrophilia. The authors reported that, of their sample of genuine necrophiles. IQ data was limited, but not abnormally low. About half of the sample had a personality disorder, and 11% of true necrophiles were psychotic. Rossman and Resnick concluded that their data challenged the conventional view of necrophiles as generally psychotic, mentally deficient, or unable to obtain a consenting partner. Necrophilia has been observed in mammals, birds, reptiles, and frogs. In 1960, Robert Dickerman described necrophilia in ground squirrels, which he termed Davian behavior in reference to a limerick about a necrophiliac miner named Dave. The label is still used for necrophilia in animals. Certain species of arachnids and insects practice sexual cannibalism in which the female cannibalizes her male mate prior to, during, or after copulation. Keyes Moliker made one observation while he was sitting in his office at the Natural History Museum Rotterdam, when he heard the distinctive thud of a bird hitting the glass facade of the building. Upon inspection, he discovered a drake mallard lying dead outside the building. Next to the downed bird there was a second drake mallard standing close by. As Moliker observed the couple, the living drake pecked at the corpse of the dead one for a few minutes then mounted the corpse and began copulating with it. The act of necrophilia lasted for about 75 minutes, in which time, according to Moliker, 
the living drake took two short breaks before resuming with copulating behavior. Moliker surmised that at the time of the collision with the window the two mallards were engaged in a common pattern in duck behavior called attempted rape flight. When one died the other one just went for it and didn't get any negative feedback well, didn't get any feedback, according to Moliker. Necrophilia had previously only been reported in heterosexual mallard pairs. In a short paper known as Sexual Habits of the Adelie Penguin, deemed too shocking for contemporary publication, George Murray Levick described little hooligan bands of penguins mating with dead females in the Cape Adare Rookery, the largest group of Adelie penguins, in 1911 and 1912. This is nowadays ascribed to lack of experience of young penguins, a dead female, with eyes half closed, closely resembles a compliant female. A Gentoo penguin was observed attempting to have intercourse with a dead penguin in 1921. A male New Zealand sea lion was once observed attempting to copulate with a dead female New Zealand fur seal in the wild. The sea lion nudged the seal repeatedly, then mounted her and made several pelvic thrusts. Approximately ten minutes later, the sea lion became disturbed by the researcher's presence, dragged the corpse of the seal into the water and swam away while holding it. A male sea otter was observed holding a female sea otter underwater until she drowned, and then repeatedly copulating with her carcass. Several months later, the same sea otter was again observed copulating with the carcass of a different female. Copulation with a dead female pilot whale by a captive male pilot whale has been observed, and possible sexual behavior between two male humpback whales, one dead, has also been reported. In 1983, a male rock dove was observed copulating with the corpse of a dove that had shortly before had its head crushed by a car. In 2001, a researcher laid out sand martin corpses to attract flocks of other sand martins. In each of six trials, one to five individuals from flocks of 50 to 500 were observed attempting to copulate with the dead sand martins. This occurred one to two months after the breeding season, since copulation outside the breeding season is uncommon among birds, the researcher speculated that the lack of resistance by the corpses stimulated the behavior. Charles Brown observed at least ten cliff swallows attempt to copulate with a road-killed cliff swallow in the space of 15 minutes. He commented, this isn't the first time I've seen cliff swallows do this, the bright orange rump sticking up seems to be all the stimulus these birds need. Necrophilia has also been reported in the European swallow, grey-backed sparrow lark, Stark's lark, and the snow goose. A Norwegian television report showed a male hybrid between a black grouse and western capercaillie kill a male black grouse before attempting to copulate with it. Necrophilia has been documented in various lizard species, including the giant amoeba, the leopard lizard, and Holbrookia maculata. There are two reports of necrophilic behavior in the sleepy lizard. In one, the partner of a male lizard got caught in fencing wire and died. The male continued to display courtship behavior towards his partner two days after her death. This lizard's necrophilia was believed to stem from its strong monogamous bond. In one study of black and white tegel lizards, two different males were observed attempting to court and copulate with a single female corpse on two consecutive days. On the first day, the corpse was freshly dead, but by the second day it was bloating and emitting a strong putrefying odor. The researcher attributed the behavior to sex pheromones still acting on the carcass. Male garter snakes often copulate with dead females. One case has been reported in the Bothrops Jararaca snake with a dead South American rattlesnake. 
The prairie rattlesnake and Helicops carini cauda's snake have both been seen attempting to mate with decapitated females, presumably attracted by still active sex pheromones. Male crayfish sometimes copulate with dead crayfish of either sex, and in one observation even with a dead crayfish of a different species. In frogs, it has been observed in the foothill yellow-legged frog, the yellow fire-bellied toad, the common frog, the Oregon spotted frog, Dendropsophus columbianus, and Rinella jimmy. The film Cane Toads, an unnatural history shows a male toad copulating with a female toad that had been run over by a car. It goes on to do this for eight hours. Necrophilic amplexus in frogs may occur because males will mount any pliable object the size of an adult female. If the mounted object is a live frog not appropriate for mating, it will vibrate its body or vocalize a call to be released. Dead frogs cannot do this, so they may be held for hours. The Amazonian frog Rinella proboscidea sometimes practices what has been termed functional necrophilia, a male grasps the corpse of a dead female and squeezes it until oocytes are ejected, and then fertilizes them. Article 212 of the Brazilian Penal Code states as follows. Art. 212, to abuse a cadaver or its ashes, penalty, detention, from one to three years, plus fine. Although sex with a corpse is not explicitly mentioned, a person who has sex with a corpse may be convicted of a crime under the above article. The legal asset protected by such article is not the corpse's objective honor, but the feeling of good memories, respect, and veneration that living people keep about the deceased person, these persons are considered passive subjects of the corpse's violation. Section 297 of the Indian Penal Code entitled Trespassing on Burial Places, etc., states as follows. Whoever, with the intention of wounding the feelings of any person, or of insulting the religion of any person, or with the knowledge that the feelings of any person are likely to be wounded, or that the religion of any person is likely to be insulted thereby, commits any trespass in any place of worship or on any place of sculpture, or any place set apart from the performance of funeral rites or as a depository for the remains of the dead, or offers any indignity to any human corpse, or causes disturbance to any persons assembled for the performance of funeral ceremonies, shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one year, or with fine, or with both. Although sex with a corpse is not explicitly mentioned, a person who has sex with a corpse may be convicted under the above section. Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code could also be invoked. Under Section 150 of the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961, it is an offence for there to be misconduct in respect to human remains. Subsection elaborates that this applies if someone improperly or indecently interferes with or offers indignity to any dead human body or human remains, whether buried or not. This statute is therefore applicable to sex with corpses and carries a potential two-year prison sentence, although there is no case law as yet that would apply the aforementioned statute. Section 14 of the Criminal Law Amendment Act, 2007 prohibits the commission of a sexual act with a corpse. Until codified by the Act it was a common law offense. Category A e.g. Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Category B, e.g. Gary Ridgway, Dennis Nilsson, Category C, e.g. Andre Chikatilo, Joseph Fokker, Category D, e.g. Robert Yates, Earl Nelson, Category E, e.g. Richard Ramirez, Mark Dixie, Category F, Category G, e.g. Robert Knapper, 
Peter Sutcliffe, Category H. E. G. Albert Fish, Peter Curtin. 68% were motivated by a desire for an unresisting and unrejecting partner, 21% by a want for reunion with a lost partner, 15% by sexual attraction to dead people, 15% by a desire for comfort or to overcome feelings of isolation, and 12% by a desire to remedy low self-esteem by expressing power over a corpse. Section 16, 10 of the Swedish Penal Code criminalizes necrophilia, but it is not explicitly mentioned. Necrophilia falls under the regulations against abusing a corpse or grave, which carries a maximum sentence of two years in prison. One person has been convicted of necrophilia. He was sentenced to psychiatric care for that and other crimes, including arson. Sexual penetration of a corpse was made illegal under the Sexual Offenses Act 2003, carrying a maximum sentence of two years imprisonment. Prior to 2003, necrophilia was not illegal, however, exposing a naked corpse in public was classed as a public nuisance 15 Cox 171. There is no federal legislation specifically barring sex with a corpse. Multiple states have their own laws.